I had six. Um, but I, I thought this, this was for the purpose of public input if the public had more projects. But I would like to take a moment to introduce Mr. Harrigan, our financial advisor, and Mr. Alsop, Bond Council. They are in the audience today. And some of these projects, um, we did, County Legal Council and myself did meet with Mr. Harrigan and Mr. Alsop last week, and we did determine that some of these projects would not be permissible under GeoBond. Which one of those projects? Um, this one is certainly not permissible. Um, this one is questionable. This one is probably not permissible. And this one is questionable. We have, we have a couple of things that are not permissible. One was a county, new county software. The next one is questionable. Rates for County Road Department use and Sheriff Department vehicles. This is another one that's maybe ambulance and EMS. <coughs> I think most of the geo bond has to be for infrastructure uh, purposes instead of uh, into the actual thing that's producing the uh, doable. Well, I believe that you guys please correct me if I'm wrong, but the or I IRS rules that are attached to these so that the equipment or the whatever you're purchasing has to exceed the life of the bond. So for this um, process, <coughs> everybody has a chance to speak on, on the projects. Uh, Michelle will be calling your names to come up to the podium. Mr. Chairman, <coughs> Um, I would like to hear if uh, the public uh, has other projects in, in mind. I would like to hear about them too. Well, when they come to the podium, they can state them. I would like a hand. I would like more or less maybe to hand out to the people that are ordered and saying, but I would like to list the projects, copies made, and hand out to the audience. Are not permissible. Okay. We'll, we'll 
give them your opinion as well. get a copy of that. She's making some copies for, or is this something different? No, no, th I think the list is coming out of this. This is correspondence between myself and the county. It's my only copy, but I can, I got it in a PDF. I can email it to you and I'm going to update it after today's meeting. If y'all want it, you're welcome to it.
sportsmanship and winning as well as losing. They also learn pride that comes along with their hard work. Our kids are our future and the future of Torrance County. And I think as adults, we need to see all possible routes to provide a safe, inviting environment for our county kids to exhibit their hard work. These stepping stones that they learn are invaluable to become model citizens of our county. And our kids are, are our future. I think it's very important that we seek this bond to provide a safe and inviting environment, not only for the kids that exhibit, but for the people that participate in just coming and watching and supporting our youth. Our next two speakers are Gene Wynn and Moriarty FFA. Good morning. I'm Gene Wynn. I'm on the Cooperative Extension Service for 4 H and Ag Agent. And uh, I'm here as well as supporting the fairground improvements part of it. I think in a, in a moment you're going to get to hear from some of the 4-H and FFA members and uh, they'll have an opportunity to tell you the importance of the fairground improvements. But I, I think that, uh, I think you're aware of this, but the fairgrounds are used quite a bit. Uh, we use them for quite a, quite a few activities with 4-H. We also use them with uh, the extension service. We have kids, cows, and more the last two years over there. And so the fairgrounds are being utilized more and more throughout the year. I think the social as well as the economic benefits are tremendous to the county, as well as the city of Stancy and the town of Stancy, but I think countywide the benefits are, are tremendous. Uh, as I said, economically, the more that you uh, put into it, I think the return on it will be tremendous, but I also think from a social standpoint, the county needs a, a central point to host events and host things. Um, you know, I've been very fortunate to, to take kids to different livestock uh, contest as well as have the opportunity to evaluate livestock in different places throughout the country and I've, I've seen some really neat facilities that are multi-use buildings that uh, they're used obviously for county fair where they exhibit livestock or, or rodeos or horse shows but they're also uh, throughout the year used for all kinds of other activities um, and it's too many to even mention um, might be things such as weddings, but all the way to car shows and, and dances and just different things. And I think, and it's hard to explain that to you, but, but the, uh, you know, when you see those facilities and you see how they're being utilized, you realize the benefits to the community and to the county. So, uh, you know, I, I think from a 4-H and FFA standpoint, the once a year use of those for the county are important, but a multi-use facility that can be used throughout the year is even more important. 
uh, and I think the benefits would be tremendous. So, thank you. Put 
on that 20 acres that we've either bought or are currently buying, um, that would be county property, and the, the improvements would be for the use of everybody in the county. And there could, you know, the, the, the income position between having that fair facility on that 20 acres versus inside a uh, municipality, there could be a really good cooperative um, effort between both to where Estancia still, you know, gains revenue from those fair activities that are out there. Uh, the parades would still be here, be the closest place for, for restaurants and that type of thing. Um, I, I would fully support that, 100%. Uh, but I, I, I wouldn't support uh, putting 400,000 plus or whatever the number would end up being inside municipal boundaries because I don't think that would be fair to the county residents. Um, I, I prepared a Q&A, which the board has, and this was prepared from an email, or several emails that I sent back and forth between myself um, to speak to the commission. And Ms. Anson did a very nice job answering me. Thank you very much. Um, so it's, I, it's reformatted, and so all of the commission members should have gotten this already, so um, I just reformatted it to a Q&A format. Um, and I wanted to ask questions about, you know, there was discussion about a special election for one, and then talking about an all-mail ballot. Um, our, our wonderful county clerk, uh, Lynn Harmio, uh, did a very, very good job researching that, and the last email that I received from her was that she would not be comfortable doing a mail-out ballot, and part of my concerns that I listed was voter fraud, um, missing ballots, how, how could they track those things, how could they prove I got my ballot. How could they prove I didn't stand at the post office and fish 20 ballots out and vote them myself? Um, so my understanding, and she could speak to that, but my understanding was at the end of that communication, she, I don't believe she was comfortable processing an all-mail ballot. Um, we need more education time for the public on how that would work. And frankly, I think her office with the current election cycle at hand, they're a phenomenal crew, but that's a big learning curve on a short time period. Um, the other concern I had about the special election uh, that I was asking the question was, why do we have to do that? Why couldn't it go on a general ballot? And um, I understand that there's timelines involved, and I just wanted to clarify for myself, is the main part of the reason this is being done because of the way the bond cycle moves? Is, is that correct? If we waited till the general election ballot, we would be past the opportunity to to, to, to get into that bond cycle, is that is that correct? No, actually, the, the existing bond matures in August of 2016. So in order to try to move the bonds together, if we're going to extend this when it keep property taxes level, then it has to be, the election has to be in 75 days or whatever, the guys can elaborate on the dates, but the general election is after the tax rates have to be certified as a DFA. So, the tax rates would have to drop down for a year before they could be raised again. So we have to wait another year to get back to the public to ask, could we borrow money again? Well, we would, essentially we would, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. Oh, go ahead. Essentially we would have to, prop, the, the bond would mature, so property taxes would go, they would be calculated without the bond, so they would be lowered, and then we would be voting to increase property taxes again after that. But the, the net change, like from the last amount that was borrowed and the proposed amount, that, you know, just from the loose list that was provided, um, that's already an increase between those two figures. So I guess I, I was a little confused on why taxes would not go up, you know, with extending it. So if, if it's extended, would that limit the, the, the uh, extension on the loan to a maximum amount as was borrowed on principal before? Would it limit that, or would the ballot question allow that to increase? That's actually a question, Mr. Harry. Sorry. It's actually a great question. Um, so since since the bonds were issued in 2001, the county's assessed valuation has grown. <coughs> So that allows the county to issue a higher amount of debt at the same debt service tax rate than the bonds that were issued in, in 2001. And the, the, the timing that um, was being talked about, um, 
Department of Finance and Administration sets the debt service tax rate for the following year in September. Those are finalized, and, and really they have to be kind of finalized towards the end of, of August. So if the election was in November, the debt service tax rate for the following year would drop to zero. Um, if approved by voters, then, that, then the debt service tax rate would go up the following year after. Um, it also it also affects the timing of the sale of the bonds a little bit because you don't have any tax rate to support debt. You'd have to wait probably about eight to ten months before you could issue those bonds, so that they so that the debt service would fall in the following tax year when there would be tax collections to pay the debt service on the bonds. If that if that makes sense. Actually, for another question. Any other presentation on all of this? Will, will we be allowed to ask questions from the floor based on their presentation? Sure. Okay. We need to get it cleared up. I mean, I don't want to monopolize this by any means. They're kind of here to answer questions. They're just here. They're here to answer questions that we have. Perfect. So, are, are you on the presentation? Or are you just going to answer questions? What? Any uh, questions, sorry. they will answer it if they have them. Okay, well then, I guess my next question would be, so if you have that space of time, if I'm understanding what you just said, then the, if we would drop to zero, and then based on the new taxes coming in, that would be how the calculation would be done to say what our, our borrowing capacity is? So is, is that correct? Did I understand that? So, um, Does borrowing capacity change after that drop? Does it change? No, no. Your your capacity. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. So um, so so the capacity um, for the bonds, which I think they're about three point eight million. I think is what the 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 calculation was. Is that that's based upon one mill of property tax to support that debt, assuming no growth in, in the county's assessed valuation over a 15-year period. So the capacity stays the same whether the bonds are approved this year or approved next year. What happens is that if the bonds, if the election occurs in November, the debt service tax rate will go to zero because um, the election won't be certified prior to the Department of Finance and Administration setting that debt service tax rate. So every year the county has to certify the debt service tax rates, usually at your last meeting in September or your first meeting in October. So we wouldn't have an election, so we wouldn't be able to tell whether or not those uh, bonds were passed. Because there's no tax collections to support debt, the county would have to wait about eight to ten months to issue those bonds so the debt service would fall in the following tax year when the tax rate could be set to support that debt service. The capacity does not change under that scenario. It just it would delay the sale and then the tax rate would fluctuate from one year to the next. Okay. 